Google, speaking of NVIDIA competition, Julia says, Ben and Andrew, you might remember me from my previous TikTok email about AI photo sharing and printing. I appreciated you guys reading that on air. And no, I'm not Sundar Pichai, just the PM who launched most of those features while at Google. Um, as a side note, I totally forgot that we accused Sundar Pichai of ghostwriting Julia's email. <laughs> AI photos. Uh, that put a huge smile on my face. Thank you, Julia. Um, now I work elsewhere, she says. But my question today is, am I the only one who sees NVIDIA's recent gains as a missed opportunity for Google TPUs? Do you think Google ever had a real shot at this market? My take, Google has been working on a hardware problem since 2015, but because they never properly invested in the TPU software stack, their performance edge wasn't enough to ever get widespread adoption. So just real quick, I figured it's on topic. Um, what do you think there? Yeah, I mean, so... I talked about the difference between CPUs and GPUs. GPUs are are much simpler than CPUs, mm -hmm. but they're still programmable. You can still sort of like, the, remember, this all started with NVIDIA gaming GPUs that was used for like uh, image recognition. And suddenly it was like, wow, this could, this parallelizable is really useful. We're going to develop this, but it's all been the same sort of, sort of story there. A TPU is even simpler. So, now, the even simpler means it's cheaper to produce and it's even more scalable than sort of a GPU is. Right, it's more efficient than GPUs, right? Well, well, yeah, but it's doing less. And, and it's it's less capable, it's less flexible. That means that all this stuff's a trade-off. The fact that it's simpler and more scalable means it's even harder to program for. Okay. So, so this idea that they never properly invest in the TPU software stack Arguable, yes. Google has a long-standing problem of having internal solutions that they do a very poor job of sort of externalizing. But it's also the case that just fundamentally speaking, TPUs will and always will be much harder to program for than sort of than, than GPUs. Just mm -hmm. as GPUs are much harder and more difficult to program for than CPUs. Now, TPUs are probably closer to GPUs than GPUs are to CPUs, but but the the sort of the the trade-off very much applies. Secondly, Google is always first and foremost focused on their own needs. And so they do optimize for their internal sort of needs and then they try to sell it outside. They've never been good at going out and understanding the consumer and tuning it and understanding it. So yeah, th those are all valid criticisms. But the other thing to remember is that at the end of the day, the 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 better business, at least in theory, is hosting all this sort of stuff and and offering it up as a service, right? Like the reason to buy GPUs, which are astronomically expensive, is because your payback period is still very short. It's actually shorter, I think, than a lot of the processors. You charge so much for it on sort of a rental basis. And, and the idea is you're going to get mass usage and which fills up all, again, you want to keep them busy. You don't want them sleeping, right? And so there was a hilarious tweet going viral about someone like speculating about uh, how GPT couldn't be as big as it was because of the cost of GPUs and, and talk about like 50 people using a GPU. No, there is, these GPUs are filled constantly with tens of thousands or millions of people. Like, and part of it, the whole orchestration of channeling these results and keeping these GPUs full is a huge sort of challenge and a massive problem. And something that Microsoft and OpenAI had to work through like in the days and weeks after chat GPT, when they were overwhelmed with I sort bet, of demand, yeah. but, um, but but it's this massive par so all this is like at the end of the day having it all together and being differentiated in the top end with the the software used to access it should be more sustainable like Nvidia's business looks fantastic today but there's a reason they're scrambling to rebuild this software moat because at the end of the day Nvidia is winning because they're the fastest. And they're getting a lot of margin for that, but that's a hard thing to sustain in the very, very long run. Software is where differentiation happens and aggregation and network effects is where true moats are really, really built. So, so you know, Google is unique in that they've been at this for a long time. The fact they're so far down the road with TPUs is very impressive, but mm -hmm. I think it's perfectly rational and appropriate for them to focus that on their own. Google wins not by becoming a chip maker. Google wins by Google services dominating this new era. And they can win in this new era because they have scale and cost advantages that make it viable to roll out. This is the context of why would Apple partner with, 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 with Gemini 
for these large scale models. I suspect Google is the only entity in the world that could actually do this because they have this built out, right? And that's a pretty great and sustainable and sort of long run opportunity. This is why no one dismisses Google's opportunities. And in fact, many people still favor them in the long run for AI. And you go back to this expected value, the expected value of AI, if it manifests as the huge sort of, you know, world changing technology that it is, is going to be much greater than these profits NVIDIA is making by selling chips. Like it's going, like it's going to be in the sustainable long run sort of services. That's what Google is focused on, is focused on. And I think that's a very reasonable approach for them. It fits their company. It fits what they do. They're not suited to be a chip maker or a chip seller. It's, it's fine. Like, and they're very well placed because of TPUs and what they did with them. Uh, and, you know, if they had been trying to sell them, they'd be like, they'd be competing against NVIDIA, which has a, you know, you think CUDA, looks hard suddenly cool is the easiest thing in the world when it comes to oh i have to do tpus and sort of sell this and like <laughs> right. no we're trying to like so i i think it's fine i don't think there's there's any flaw in google's strategy with tpus by and large um now the software should be better it should be much easier for people to to get started well you know i think google's concerns is they move slow and they don't get stuff going it's been clear that transformers are a big thing it should be you know much easier to get started but they do right. have a lot of it's worth noting a lot of very large ai startups are on google and those well, are and the sort of companies that have the capabilities and the motivation to figure out how to use tpus effectively and they found the sort of the trade-off the investment to get tpus working is worth it in the long run Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, it, if I'm understanding correctly, though, software is critical to creating a market for any of this hardware, whether it's GPUs and CUDA or TPUs and and software and being able to program to TPUs. Well, so right? in the long run, okay. So, so in the early days of a market, uh, this is sort of classic Clay Christensen, the integrated sort of product wins because everyone's trying to figure out what to do. And so the more you can solve the problems internally, and and reduce the work that needs to be done externally, the better. So in the case of NVIDIA, they have this integrated CUDA and sort of sort of the chip. Once a market is defined, what happens is you, you get modularization where you get separation in the stacks because you want you want competition on the stacks because there's high motivation to reduce costs. So you want to in, in, increase sort of competition. There's high motivation for standardization because the, the powers that be are pushing for that to spur this sort of competition. And mm -hmm. so in the long run, you would expect the development of the software layer being independent of the chip and uh it, 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 and you know in this sort of up and down the stack right. this is the play for like amd for example right amd software stinks uh it's what amd is focused on and doing a somewhat good job of being helped along massively by microsoft and meta in particular who are highly motivated to find an alternative to nvidia is getting like their like PyTorch and their the and their, their various open source stacks working well on on AMD so that they can sort of substitute that in if need be. That's the goal. The 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 system integrators, the big players, want to modularize everything so they can switch stuff in and out, thus spurring competition in the market. So you get lower prices and higher performance, and you get the margin as a system integrator instead of the individual component maker getting the margin. Okay. Nvidia is fighting against that uh, because they're they don't want to be just a chip maker. They want to be a system provider themselves. So this is the huge fight and tension that is going on in the market right now.